Morning and welcome to another DX27 video. The first thing I want to address in this video is what happens or what can you do if you initialize your voice and it does not sound as a pure sine wave. So what we should be hearing is a bland sine wave. If you're not hearing a bland sine wave, then you're probably hearing this. Your modulation wheel is not at the zero position. If your modulation wheel is up there, then you will hear this. The reason is that you need to put your modulation wheel back down to zero. And that's all it is that can cause your initialized tone not to sound as a pure sine wave. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the operators in a stack affect the sound when their envelope generators are set. So the sound changes over time according to the individual envelope generators for each operator. After you have initialized your voice, it should sound like this. The next thing you want to do is to select Algorithm 2 and raise the feedback level to 7. That should be easy to do. We have Algorithm and Feedback 1 and 2. So we press the Algorithm button and we set it to 2 and we press the feedback button and we set it to 7 which is the maximum setting. The next thing we will set is the frequency ratio of the operators so we press button 13 and uh, we are going to set operators 1, 2 and 3 to 2. So we just use the lever to set operators 1, 2 and 3 to 2 and then we set operator 4 to 8. Why have we chosen these numbers? Well, basically we want that kind of higher pitch than we would get from the keyboard but at the same time we want that 8 operator remember the higher the number the higher the pitch so we set the operator ratio to 8 for 4 because we need that noise when we first strike the key which is consists of high frequencies the next step is to take the operator level number 20 and to raise all the operators to about 90 raise all the operators to 90 so that we can sort of hear how it sounds so we just switch through the operators and raise them all to 90 approximately it doesn't have to be exact So when we've got all the operators to 90 now, we've got all the operators functioning, we've got 2, 2, 2 and 8, how does it sound? It just sounds like white noise. Now what's the reason for that? The real reason for that is the feedback level on the top operator. Let me just carry that down so that you can see it for yourself. 
If we go to the feedback level and we carry that back to zero, we hear that kind of sound. However, this is not the kind of sound we want. We actually want a musical sound. We're going to put the feedback level back to seven, which is what we want, and so we've gone back to the noise. But now we're going to go to operator two. Remember operator two is the one creating the modulation on the carrier. So we go to the operator level, which is 20, and we find operator two, and we begin to reduce its output level so that the modulation is not so intense. If we bring it down to zero, we just hear a sine wave. But as we bring up operator two, the modulation stack begins to impact upon the sound. So you begin to hear a little noise. But you can still hear the sine wave behind it. So we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it about uh, 61. And we're going to then just bring up the amplitude of the operator 1 a little higher so that the actual tone rides a little higher over the noise. Let us go to operator 3 and see what would be the effect of raising and lowering the level there. We see it really doesn't make any impact at all on operator 3, so we'll just put it back to about 90, where it was before. What we want to do now is to use the envelope generator to shape that sound so that the noise quickly disappears after the key is struck sort of like glass breaking or something, the noise disappears after the key and leaves the tone. So the, 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 the operator that responsible for that is operator 4, the one at the top of the stack that has the feedback level. So we switch to operator 4 and now we go over here and we set the envelope generator where we have here a top rate we have one, two, three, four, five to set for the envelope generator. So the attack rate can remain the same because we want a very fast attack. The decay rate, on the other hand, we need to slow it down so that we can actually hear something. So what we will do is we will slow down the decay rate to about 17. Right, so that's about basically half the 31. So then we move to the decay level. Well, we could move it to 13 actually. Let's bring it down a tad. So then we now come to the second decay rate, and this is probably the most critical setting here. We need to reduce, sorry, we need to set this to about 20. Let's set this to about 20. And finally the release rate, well that's only important for after we release the key, but we can set that fairly slow, we set that to about 3. Alright, so let's hear how our sound is sounding.
Well, the noise is disappearing a little too fast. We want to adjust that. Okay, listen to this now. We get the noise and then it settles into a steady tone. Hear it? That's exactly how we want it. So what did we change in the numbers to get it to sound like that? Well, we slowed down a few of them. So here they are. This is the change in the numbers that we made. We still have 31. We made no change to the attack rate. We set the D1R to 12. We reduce that. We set the D1L to 14. Then we set the D2R to 16. And uh, we made no change to the release rate at 3. Let us quickly set the envelope generators for all the other operators. There are only three because we've finished with four now. So we're moving down to the carrier. We're going to leave the attack rate pretty much the same for all except the carrier. So we've got, we want to go to operator 1, which is the carrier. And then we want to go to attack rate. And we want to slow it down. So we set AR to 20 instead of 31. So that slows that down on the initial carrier. Now we need to slow down the decay rate as well. So for operator 1, we're going to move it from 31 down to about 8. And we can pretty much do that for the others as well. So let's go to the other operators and move that down to about 8. And... Uh, Operator 3, we could move it down to probably a little less. Let's go to about 5. So that that gives a little longer decay there. And then let's go to the levels now. This is D1L. And um, this is where we really need to, to make changes. Okay, so for the operator... Operator 3, we're going to reduce this, the level, very, very small level, right down to 3. Uh, so that gives it that punchy thing at the beginning, which then just dies out. And uh, we're going to set that to about 3. Then um, when we go to, we set 4 already, so we have to go back to 1. 1, we're going to turn it off altogether. So we don't want anything after that on one. On two, we are going to, well, put it very, 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 um, very small. What should we do with two? Let's put it to about uh, one. All right, so let's move now to our second decay rate, D2R. We've already set that on uh, the operator 4. So we come now to the operator 1. And we also kill it on the operator 1. And then on the operator 2, we set it maybe to about uh, 7. Or 8. There we go, 8. And then on the operator 3, we do the same thing. Set it to about 8. Not a critical thing here. And uh, basically that's about it. So let's hear how our sound is sounding now. So we're getting that smashing sort of sound at the beginning and then it's going to a steady tone. What we really need now is a sort of fade out 
and um, some sort of adjustment here on the um, LFO because the LFO is what's going to modulate and cause that shimmering sound that we heard initially. So we go to the LFO and this time we are selecting a square wave. We put the speed at, at maybe about 41. Okay, we set the speed at 41. A little faster than the default speed. And uh, what else do we need to do? Well, um, we need to set a delay. Notice the delay is zero. We can't afford to have a zero delay. We want that thing to come in. Uh, and set, So we set a delay of about three. What does this do? This LFO delay means that the delay doesn't kick in. So what we will have is we will have that sharp cracking, breaking sound. Then we will have a tone which will gradually warble. It won't warble immediately. We'll have the sharp cracking sound. Then we'll have the tone and then it will start to warble after a short time. Because the LFO is not going to be applied till after the delay. Right? So that's how that works. We want also to have some amplitude modulation. So we're going to turn on all the carriers for this and the, these are the four buttons that turn on all the carriers. One, two, three, four. As you can see all of them have gone to ones and then we raise the level to three which is the maximum setting. So the AMS which is amplitude sensitivity 20 here, uh, sorry 10, button 10. We have it set all to AMS is set to three and all ones. Listen to it now. We're very close to the initial sound that we're trying to make. We have zero on the PMD and 99 on the AMD. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.